Hello everybody. Today in this lecture we will study about the multi product control atmosphere or modified atmosphere storage unit. Basically in this part of the lecture we will discuss about various aspects of design of a control atmosphere storage facility. In the earlier classes we have seen that the control atmosphere storage includes oxygen and carbon dioxide levels which are continuously maintained different from those normally available in ambient air. So, maybe by suitable means the O2 and CO2 levels are maintained. Generally high end technologies are used to adjust the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels to the predetermined set value. Predetermined set value means that is the particular concentration of oxygen or particular concentration of carbon dioxide that is required for maximum shelf life of a commodity. So, a facility for the control atmosphere storage accordingly should include the required instrumentation and other support units which are required which are needed for manipulating the environmental conditions as well as maintaining the environmental conditions. So, obviously, it should have one air tight compartment a chamber, then refrigeration unit or heating element to maintain the desired temperature. It should have a humidification system to maintain relative humidity. It should be provided with nitrogen purging facility to displace oxygen and create desired levels of oxygen concentrations. The system or facility should be provided with carbon dioxide purging facilities to maintain the desired carbon dioxide concentration in the storage environment and the facility should be provided with all venting accessories etcetera to prevent accumulation of unwanted gases in the system that is and the O2, CO2, ethylene, temperature, relative humidity, sensors etcetera that is very important component of the storage facility that is to sense these and indicate the levels of these gases in the facility. So, there are generally two types of control atmosphere chambers, one contains peliflex unit, the other is the air tight compartment. In the peliflex unit as you can see in this figure that is there is a special plastic pilot. These a plastic cover for gas tight ceiling, bottles of nitrogen for oxygen reduction they are provided the bottles of carbon dioxide, the gas inlet and outlet hoses and a fully automatic measuring and regulation system with a built in oxygen or carbon dioxide meter. So, you can see that different Palifex units that is these are there. So, the atmosphere inside this plastic pellet etcetera is maintained. So, the major advantage of this Palifex unit consists of that different gas conditions can be set as per the uh, requirement that is in the different pilots, different uh, conditions can be maintained and all these pilots they can be kept in the same chamber. So, it provides a little flexibility of even storing different commodities requiring different conditions in the same chamber.
the other system is the gas tight storage chamber the capacity of the storage chamber will depend upon the tonnage of the fruit that is what is the quantity of the fruit should which is required to be kept or quantity of the other food materials required to be kept bulk density of the food volume of the storage accessories and free volume inside storage facility which is required for material handling so as per the regulatory requirement in a commercial control atmosphere storage unit 65% of the total volume should be kept free that is for the material movement and for other purposes so total volume of the storage room required can be calculated from this equation that is v is equal to vsa plus vf plus fv where vsa is the volume occupied by the storage accessories that is the nitrogen generator carbon dioxide cylinder accessories sensors etc and the vf is the volume occupied by fruit or in general if you want to say volume occupied by the food that is to be kept in the storage unit uh, storage unit and this can be obviously determined by the weight of the food divided by its density and fv is the free volume that is required as i told you that it is the 65% of the total space so it is basically 0.65 v so so accordingly the v can be calculated that is total volume required in the storage unit can be calculated now let us uh, cons- discuss one by one what are the various aspect like uh, heating system co2 generating system o2 generating system what are the, the various factor which are included in their design and in the load calculation etc so first of all the design of a refrigeration unit so the heat load added by the product to the storage is an important consideration that is it is one important factor for the calculation of the refrigeration capacity of control atmosphere storage system so there are three types of heat load which should be considered number 1 chilling load then heat of respiration and heat conducted through the storage wall so all these three consideration are all these three loads finally will decide the total load that is required in the storage facility so the chilling load that is qc it considers the amount of heat required to be removed from the product that is the product enters in the storage facility as a comparatively higher temperature so in order to bring it to the required level that is required temperature suppose a material handles at 30 degrees celsius and in the storage facility the temperature is required to be maintained at 5 degrees celsius so whatever the heat is required to be removed to bring the material from 30 to uh, 5 degrees celsius that is called chilling load the qc can be calculated by the equation that is the m cp t1 minus t2 by t where m is the mass of the product cp is the mean specific heat of the product t1 minus t2 is the initial and final temperature as i told you that from 30 to 5 then 30 minus 5 that is so it is t1 minus t2 is the temperature difference and of course the t is the chilling time so from this one can calculate the chilling load qc the heat of respiration as you all know you have seen in the earlier classes that all the biological materials when they are put in the storage facility even inside the st- room they generate heat all right when they are stored even if in, they are stored in cold atmosphere so they generate heat due to heat of respiration all right and also there are certain chemical reactions which undergo inside the material so the chemical reactions also produce heat so the amount of heat generated by the food material 
that is q r may be equal to m h g by t where m is the mass of the food t is the time and h g is the heat generated by the food that is kj per kg hour kilo joule per kg hour so from this one can find out what is the heat generated by the food or heat of respiration or total heat of the chemical reactions etc then third component heat conducted through the storage walls and here the steady state heat flow by conduction from the walls and ceiling is calculated based upon the fourier's law of heat transfer which states that q total heat transfer is equal to u a delta t where a is the area perpendicular to the direction of heat transfer delta t is the temperature difference between inside and outside temperature u is the overall heat transfer coefficient and it is calculated based on insulation and wall thickness that 1 by u is 1 by h0 plus dx in by k in plus dx w by k w plus 1 by h i here k w and k i n are the thermal conductivities of the wall and insulation materials h0 and h1 they are normally outside and inside convective heat transfer coefficients so from these values or these considerations one can find out how much will be the total heat that will be conducted through the storage walls so from these three finally the load heating load or cooling load the of the refrigeration unit can be calculated now second aspect is the oxygen control in the control atmosphere chamber the concentration of oxygen inside the ca chamber can be decreased by purging in the inert gas nitrogen because here normally we are taking by some artificial means we try to create the conditions so nitrogen is separated from air in a nitrogen generator pressure swing adsorption system technology is generally used to separate nitrogen from other components of air that is o2 co2 or water vapor etc and the separation of nitrogen takes place in an adsorber vessel which is filled with carbon molecular c so the operating principles of the nitrogen generator includes that the separation of nitrogen from air takes place due to the faster kinetic diffusion of oxygen molecules into the pore structure of the carbon molecule c that is normally called as cms than the nitrogen molecules because the oxygen molecule is smaller than the nitrogen molecule cms absorbs oxygen carbon dioxide moisture in compressed air in a short period of time and compressed nitrogen gas is available at the outlet when the pressure decreases to the atmospheric or vacuum level the cms which has adsorbed oxygen gas and other easily dissolves them and is regenerated so in the process that is the cms gas regenerated and the nitrogen production is continued so you can see here in this figure that is the nitrogen generator in the picture that is the this uh, green portion is known as the nitrogen gas how the air is compressed air red color is enters there are two adsorbers all right so how this nitrogen is separated from this adsorbed by these adsorber system that is adsorber and regeneration operations are done alternatively between two adsorption columns and nitrogen gas is made available continuously from the air and it is uh, it is dispersed so can see that is nitrogen gas is going whereas the air is coming here it goes through these two and the waste gases etc they are allowed to escape to the atmosphere
So, in this process that is the nitrogen generators they work. So, important factor is that how to calculate how to decide the capacity of the nitrogen generator. So, the volume flow rate of nitrogen in the control atmosphere chamber depends upon oxygen concentration set point in the CO chamber and free volume of the CA chamber. So, to develop relationship between the amount of nitrogen required and different operating parameters of the CA chamber. Generally, it is assumed that number one the chamber is leak proof and perfectly well mixed. Okay. The second assumption is the change in gas composition due to respiratory metabolism of a stored product during nitrogen flushing is negligible. And third assumption is that concentration of O2 present in nitrogen is the same throughout the flushing. So, with these assumptions one can determine the capacity of the nitrogen generator by calculating moles of O2 that is oxygen inflow and moles of oxygen outflow that is for the calculation of moles of oxygen inflow and outflow which, which are shown here in equations 1 and 2 that is the flow rate of the nitrogen that is concentration of oxygen present in nitrogen concentration of oxygen present in C A chamber at time t, t is the flushing time, molecular weight of oxygen and density of the L oxygen these are taken into consideration. From these data the inflow and outflow of O2 in the C A chamber is calculated and from these data if we combine equation 1 and equation 2 you can get, get the find out one can calculate what is the total moles of oxygen accumulation. There is total moles of oxygen accumulation is equal to O 2 T minus O 2 N multiplied by rho O 2 multiplied by V N 2 multiplied by D T by M O 2. So, the equation 3 you get from equation 3 total moles of O2 accumulation can be. So, this total moles of O2 accumulation in the C A chamber during flushing time T can be then calculated using equation 4 and one can combine by combining the equation 3 and equation 4 the total volume flow rate of the nitrogen in the control atmospheric chamber can be found out that is given by the equation V n 2 is equal to V f by T L n O 2 A minus O 2 n divided by O 2 2 minus O 2 n. So, from this one can calculate what is the total volume flow rate of the nitrogen inside the control C A chamber. Then the next aspect is the humidity control that is the moisture loss of the stored product inside the C A chamber. If it is reduced below 90 percent then there is a no significant weight loss. So, normally it is advisable that to make a constant weight of the material the relative humidity all right should be above 90 percent. So, for this purpose most of the C A units might require to be provided with a suitable uh, uh, relative humidity or humidity uh, uh, relative humidity maintaining system or humidification system right so rh in the storage facility can be controlled by providing with the different there are some water and then I, by having appropriate atomization system generally disk atomizer which you can see here which sprinkles fine droplets of the water in the system and the humidity so, either by water spray or by steam spray the humidity that is depending upon whether the you want more humidity in the system, you want less humidity in the system accordingly water spray or steam spray can be done. So, regarding the for the calculation of the capacity of the humidifier right that is the inside the storage chamber what should be the final 
humidity it can be determined on the based of the energy balance as well as mass balance so if we assume that the flow rate the humidity ratio and enthalpy ratio of the initial air stream in the ch chamber saturated air stream from the humidifier and the desired air stream in the ch chamber if these be m1 h1 h1 and m2 h2 h2 and m3 h3 s3 respectively then the mass balance can be done by balancing the air flow rate in the system that is m3 is equal to m1 plus m2 m1 is the mass of the air stream in the ch chamber m3 is the mass of the finally desired air stream inside the ch chamber similarly the final humidity ratio in the ch chamber is determined by humidity balance equation m3 s3 is equal to m1 h1 plus m2 h2 the enthalpy of the air stream in the ch chamber can be determined by the energy balance equation that is m3 s3 is equal to m1 h1 plus m2 h2 and by solving these three equations that is the energy balance equation humidity balance equation and mass balance equation equation 1 2 and 3 one can determine the mass flow rate of water jet in the ch chamber for the required or for the desired humidity control then curve for the carbon dioxide control in the ca facility i hope you all know that the air contains about 0.03% carbon dioxide the target value of co2 which is set in the ca chamber is usually greater than that which is present in the air that is it is higher than the normal carbon dioxide concentration and the required co2 level to be maintained it depends upon product to product for example for guava that is for the ca storage of guava normally 5% carbon dioxide in the storage atmosphere is maintained similarly for banana it may be different for apple it may be different so the rate of co2 accumulation in the ca chamber due to the product respiration because when the material respires it gives co2 so the co2 accumulation is can be calculated so the it will be co2 accumulated will be equal to mass of the stored product multiplied by rate of co2 production per kg product that is the rate that is per kg per hour then similarly rate of co2 inflow in the ch chamber from the cylinder can be calculated from the co2 that is the that is what the co2 required is the target level of co2 set percentage minus 0.03 divided by 100 into free volume inside the ch chamber so using these equations one can calculate what is the co2 accumulated what is the co2 required and if co2 required is more than co2 accumulated the carbon dioxide gas should be purged in the ca atmosphere from co2 cylinders which are provided in the storage facility in case if co2 required is less than the co2 accumulated or in other words if co2 accumulated is more than the co2 required then the co2 level inside the storage facility is maintained by using co2 scrubbers and, and uh, we have what are different types of co2 scrubbers etc that is we have studied uh, we have seen in the earlier class that is it the may work on adsorption system or regeneration system so that is important that is whether so both type of arrangement one should have that is CO2 for arrangement for removal of CO2, arrangement for addition of CO2, and as the case may be, it should be accordingly maintained. Then finally, the ethylene control, because many times we, it might be required to reduce the rate of ripening or to hasten the rate of ripening. So accordingly, the ethylene 
concentration of the ethylene gas inside the storage facility might be increased or concentration of ethylene gas inside the storage facility might be removed by having ethylene absorbers or giving ethylene gas cylinder connection etcetera as the case may be depending whether one wants to increase the rate of ripening or one want to decrease the rate of ripening. So, the required flow rate of ethylene in the CA chamber can be calculated by equation that is the amount of ethylene to be maintained in the CA chamber that is the percent divided by 100 multiplied by free volume inside the CA chamber. Ethylene decomposers they are they can be used these decomposers remove ethylene from the cold stores based on the catalytic combustion. The ethylene decomposers uses oxygen to combust ethylene to form carbon dioxide and water and this enables ethylene to be kept at the required level whether it is PPB label or PPM label can be. So, the capacity of the ethylene decomposer can be estimated from the equation F is equal to R m by C d. F is the output of the decomposer, m is the total tonnage in the fruit, R is the ethylene production of fruit, C is the required ethylene concentration and D is the efficiency ratio which is 95 percent efficiency ratio is taken in general. So, now the other important thing is the sensors that is the system should be provided with the oxygen sensors, humidity sensor, ethylene sensors for sensing the oxygen concentration and indicating it that is normally zirconia sensors are used for measurement of oxygen. Zirconia ceramic cells only allow oxygen ions to pass through a at high temperature with reference gas on one side and sample gas on the other the oxygen ions move from the side with the higher concentration to that with the lowest concentration. The movement of ions generates an electromotive force which can be measured or which is measured to determine the oxygen content and then it is indicated using different uh, that is appropriate indicators. Similarly, carbon dioxide sensor when a light source is exposed to a gas stream containing carbon dioxide, energy from the infrared region of the spectrum is absorbed by the gas and the amount of the light absorbed by the gas stream is directly proportional to the CO2 content in the gas. Ethylene sensors are normally silicon carbide based gas sensors okay, which are used for the detection of ethylene. Oh, now, all these components by taking into consideration we in the agricultural and food engineering department at IIT Khadakpur have got one control and modified atmosphere storage unit made and this is installed that is for this control and modified atmosphere unit multi product control and modified atmosphere unit has the capacity to store 1000 kg of the fruit. You can see the top the it is the picture and in the bottom the lower part of the slide it contains that is inside of the storage facility that is this is a container it can be just by putting an injure, it can be a movable storage facility, it can be made taken from there to for the collection of the materials alright. So, in one third of the facility that is which you can see here inside that is all the instrumentation that is used where nitrogen generator, ethylene cylinder, carbon dioxide cylinders etcetera are there. In the top of the system we have also provided with the water tank and electrical connection etcetera. So, the one third contains instrumentation, the second two third of the system normally it is provided with the chamber. So, you see that inside there are four chamber basically one, two, three and four chamber 
and all these four chambers that is in individual chambers they can keep 250 kg of individual fruits. So, these chambers they can be opened and closed individually or also they can be opened and closed by a centralized system. They all the data that is respiration data and other data etcetera which can through that uh, this can be directly tra passed transferred to the computer and we can even study that is how the respiration and other behavior is taking place, how respiration etcetera weight loss and all those things is taking place during the storage number. The that is here you see that in inner view of one chamber that is in the chamber there are trolleys, different uh, trolleys are provided. These trolleys if one wants that is the material can be kept on the trays and the trays be put on the trolleys and trolleys can be uh, trolley loaded with the materials can be put or if one wants to put these uh, fruits or vegetable or other material into bags etcetera all these whole trolley system can be taken out and bagged food, uh, food uh, fruits vegetable in packets etcetera they can be put here. Another that is individual chamber as you can see here that is indicators are there that is individual chambers are provided with the indicators and all these chambers that is the temperature from 0 to 50 degree Celsius, oxygen from 0.1 to 25 percent, CO2 point from 0.1 to 25 percent, relative humidity 10 to 95 percent and ethylene from 1 to 1000 ppm. So, in all these chambers there is any combination and permutations of these that is the gases oxygen CO2 and ethylene and temperature and relative humidity can be maintained that is the in different chambers different combinations of these can be maintained in all the four chambers same combinations can be maintained right depending upon whether you want to store that is the same material in all the chambers can be done or different material in chamber 1 we can have tomato in chamber 2 one can have apple in chamber 3 one can have other fruit or other food material and accordingly the conditions can be. So, the gaseous composition, temperature, relative humidity etcetera that can be uh, controlled as per the desired label whether you want to facilitate the ripening of the fruit, whether one wants to delay the ripening of the food to increase the self life. So, accordingly what is the uh, what is required thing accordingly the conditions can be helped. and even it has been provided with the automatic record keeping facility the system. So, this is your our multi product CA and MA storage unit which is uh, fabricated and installed in our department. So, with this I thank you very much for your patience. Thank you.